Over the past few years, I could not be more thankful for the support shown on my video the differences between D1, D2, and D3 football. It is my most popular video on the channel and is one I never thought would find the success it would. In the comment section though, I have had many ask me to look at Canadian college football and compare it to American college football. Today, I have decided to do that. You won't want to miss this one. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release multiple videos a week this season. Also, let me know which international college football league you want me to look into next in the comment section below. Canadian college football is played under the division known as U Sports, formerly known as the Canadian Inner University Sports. The reason for the rebrand in 2016 was viewed as a key first step in a much bigger business and marketing plan aimed at getting more media attention, increasing revenues from national sponsors, and generating more excitement among fans and student athletes for their member schools, sports programs. It consists of four conferences consisting of a total of 27 teams. The conferences are split up regionally and are known as the Canadian West Universities Athletic Association, Ontario University Athletics, Réseau du Sports Étudiante du Québec, and Atlantic University Sports. At the end of every season, the champions of each conference advance to semifinal bowl games. The winners of these meet in the Veneer Cup National Championship. The origins of North American football can be traced back to the 1800s when there was a game played at the University of Toronto in 1861. A handful of U Sports programs have been around since the 1860s, making them older than some American football programs. In 1874, McGill University in Montreal challenged Harvard University to a series of games. The Grey Cup, which is a championship trophy for the Canadian Football League, was actually originally the trophy for the winner of the University of Toronto versus Queen's University matchup. The regular season for U Sports football lasts 9 to 10 weeks depending on the conference, with each team beginning play during the weekend before Labor Day weekend. Teams play 8 regular season games, and regular season games are in conference with exhibition preseason games being played between different conferences. There have been efforts to expand non-conference play led by businessman David Dube and Jim Mullins, a Vancouver broadcaster known as the Northern Eight, to expand the prominence of Canadian college football at the time on a national basis leading to more televised games. The profit from these televised games would be used to subsidize the production costs for these telecasts. The Canadian West Conference backed the proposal, but the OUA, RSEQ and AUS showed concerns for the plans due to travel costs and their effects on the standings and rejected the plan. Every year, the Heck Crichton Trophy is given to the best player in U Sports football, making it their version of the Heisman Trophy. So what are the differences between the NCAA and U Sports? Well, to start, the NCAA is a billion dollar sports enterprise while U Sports is not. The NCAA is much more lucrative than U Sports in the sense that millions of people actually watch college football or basketball in the United States. While university sports in Canada have made great strides in developing talent and putting money into their production of their leagues over the past decades, it still falls in comparison to the NCAA. U Sports lacks the exposure in television deals the NCAA has, and their marketing and football pales in comparison to the NCAA as well. U Sports also lacks popularity because non-pro sports are viewed poorly in Canada. The best comparison for the level of play is Division II football. The reason I say that is because Simon Fraser left Canada's inner university sports to become a member of the NCAA's Division II. Just like in Canada, many schools at the Division II level don't offer full scholarships. SFU was actually formerly a member of the NAIA before joining the CIS in 2002 after being rejected by D2 in 2000. They did not find much success at the Division II level and it was announced that the team would be dropped by the university in 2023. Alumni are actually fighting this move, but the school will not play games during the 2023 season as they explore different options. Let me know if you want me to do a video on the team to see if we can maybe help save the football program by bringing awareness. The Veneer Cup began in 1965 and is named in honor of Governor General George's Veneer. Originally, the game was held in Toronto, but has since moved to the conference's bidding to host the matchup. Since then, the championship has taken place in Hamilton, Saskatoon, Quebec City, Vancouver, and Montreal. To make it to the championship game, the four conference champions are placed in a playoff across different conferences. For example, in the Atlantic Conference, the top three teams qualify for the playoffs, with the first place team receiving a bye. 
In the Canada West and Quebec conferences, the top four teams qualify for the playoffs. In Ontario, the top six teams qualify with the top two teams receiving playoff buys to the next round. Due to their playoffs lasting longer with more teams, the Ontario University Athletic Conference starts their playoffs a week earlier compared to the other conferences. The winner of each conference wins their own trophy. The Hardy Trophy in the West, the Yates Cup in Ontario, the Dunsmore Cup in Quebec, and the Jewett Trophy in the Atlantic Conference. The winner of each conference playoff team then earns a bid to play in the four-team playoff known as the Mitchell Bowl and UTech Bowl to make it to the Veneer Cup. The team with the most Veneer Cups is the Université Laval from the Quebec Conference with 10 total. They are followed by the University of Western Ontario with 7 and the University of Calgary with 5. Many Canadian football players go on to participate in the CFL Draft, with, which is the CFL's version of the NFL Draft, and lasts 8 rounds. In 2022, there were 205 former U Sports players on the CFL team's rosters on opening day. There have been 14 U Sports players drafted in the National Football League, with Tavis Robinson being the most recent when he was taken by the Baltimore Ravens with the 124th pick in the fourth round of the 2023 NFL Draft. Robinson actually started his college career in Canada before transferring to Ole Miss to finish out his college career. Let me know if you want me to do a video on him because he was highly sought after by many SEC teams. There have been efforts to expand the youth sports football footprint by creating new programs in recent years, such as the efforts at Carleton University in Ottawa, which returned after a 15-year hiatus in 2013. While other schools have looked into it but have failed to get the backing from their university board of regions, although there was alumni support. A club team league known as the Atlantic Football League featured four to five universities depending on the season. There is hope this may lead to varsity teams featured at some of these schools down the road. Popularity for youth sports teams are growing, but as of now, it is nothing compared to the NCAA. Canadian college football is extremely interesting to me now, and I would have never thought to look into it had it not been for y'all's recommendations. What do you think? What division of football or country of college football should I look into next? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.